And here's what I've noticed, you know, that sometimes, like in chatting with business owners, they'll be like, I need more clients. But they'll have a story saying, I'm so busy, I don't have time for anything. Mm. And there's a conflict in creation. Welcome to Marketing with Vino, the edutainment business growth podcast, mixing education and entertainment to make growing your service business much more fun. Your hosts, Quinton Venter, online marketing expert, and Gabby Kowalski, creator of the Business Freedom Formula, have a glass of wine and share powerful and up-to-date strategies to help grow your service business fast. Hey guys, welcome to another amazing episode, episode number 31, Marketing with Vino, and with us is the most amazing Gabs. Welcome Gabs. Hey, awesome, Quinton. Marketing with Vino is 31. She's a, she's a young lady. She's an adult. The, uh, we're calling her a she. I don't know if that's okay. I think she's a she. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say she's a she. She's, she's sexy. She's fun. We're going to call it as, uh, as she's a she. That's Guys, I want to share something, something pretty cool with you. I um, <laughs> want to share a pretty cool topic with you. And it's actually the topic of how do we get cool stuff to happen? Here's the truth. The truth of the matter is that I believe, and it's not just me that believes this, there's plenty of evidence um, if, you, if you look at you know, any research done into quantum physics, and the tr- we create the world that we have around us. Yeah. The who you are creates the world. Your business is literally a reflection of you. Yeah, totally. And if you, yep, and if you don't like the reflection, then please do some work on yourself. I want to share with you guys something pretty cool, because... Often, we may have certain setbacks that occur in business, and if you truly look from the right perspective, you'll see that you created them for a really beautiful reason. I believe that everything that happens to us has a positive uh, outcome or a gift. Sometimes, sometimes we don't see the gift in it for years. Sometimes it might take months. Sometimes it will take five seconds. Ultimately, though, Nothing's happening to you. It's all happening for you based, exactly. on, based on what your thoughts are. And so I was just, you know, just before we pressed record, I was sharing with Quinton that um, I just ran a promotional workshop. And, um, and what that means is I run an awesome killer workshop, come and, come and check it out, called Business Freedom Intensive, where I give like all my love and all my best stuff in one full day, open to public, so people can come check me out and see if they want to work with me further. And leading up to this event, I'd been doing a whole bunch of stuff on my health. So a couple of years ago, I, um, I literally depleted my adrenals, burnt out in business, and have been decoding to never do that again and teaching my clients how not to burn out. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a gift though. Here's the irony. If I hadn't all burnt out back then, I wouldn't know what I know now to help people avoid it. So the gift in it, does that make sense? Like my mission was to help people really freaking just be epic at business and not just have the money and the time, but also have the fulfillment, the bliss. And so the irony is that my vision of that, you know, of wanting to make that kind of an impact on the planet, you know, there's a gift in me going down the path of finding the wrong path and then correcting the path, if that makes sense. Yeah. And now I can share that. So... I've been doing a whole bunch of stuff and working with this uh, awesome health coach and healing. I've got to rest a lot. Give and leading up to the promotion. Give sorry. Give your love co- your health coach coach some love. Like, where can people Lots find out about him? Oh yes. Oh god, he's pretty flat out. The um, <laughs> yeah, his name's Carl. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> um, look, if you do, if you do want to, um, if you do want to find out about him, he's uh, he's based in Melbourne. He's freaking phenomenal, to be honest. The, um, he blows me away. So he's been working for the last 25 plus years. He works with, um, he specializes with working with athletes who went so hard that they actually did damage themselves. So he works with gold medalists and whatnot, but the ones that quite frankly also depleted their adrenals. <laughs> because what, what you don't often see is the overachievers on the planet, you know, they may inspire you, but for the most part, what most people don't know about them is they kind of break themselves along the way. And so he specializes with working with people like that. Guys, if you, uh, if you do want me to hook you up with this person who specializes in helping you get back on track and, you know, as, as opposed to it taking you five to seven years to actually heal from adrenal fatigue like it normally does, he can fast track that and have that process, you know, down to maybe a year or less depending on where you're starting from. Then get on to marketingwithvino.com, join the Marketing with Vino Club it's, a, uh, it's our gift to you. It's a, it's a club that you can join. 
and just get in touch with me through that club and say that you want his details and I can hook you guys up. So yeah. that's how we're going to do that one, if that's cool, because I don't have his details on me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But anyway, so back to what I was saying. So, so leading, up to, leading up to this event, um, and now this is an event where people will come and they'll actually become clients. So they'll join first class, they'll join one of my masterminds. And I was thinking to myself, oh, you know what, like, I'm actually like, I'm pretty content with where my business is at. I don't really want to take on too many new clients right now because I'm nurturing myself. I want to mm. give more energy and love to myself. I really don't want to take on more than five new clients right now. The, um, and I was kind of resisting like marketing. I, I, I truly, like I didn't do my normal marketing. Like, so normally I post stuff on, on, um, on groups and you know, on my page and I do stuff. This time, I did nothing. I did do an email that Quinton made me do. Um, <laughs> but that was it. I didn't do anything. And ironically, because subconsciously, I really didn't want to add a lot of uh, clients to, um, to my business because I really wanted to, yeah, I don't, I don't want to add a lot of clients and not be able to give them the full love I want to give them. I just, I find that really crappy. The... Um, the irony, the funny part was that the stuff that happened, like I had so many people not be able to make it to the event, reschedule and go into the next event. Mm. Like just the way the universe puts things together to actually manifest to us, you know, what, um, what we really want. Now, to me, I'm conscious of that. I was like sitting there going, how funny, because I did get five clients join, meaning that five people out of the day, you know, um, <laughs> wanted to join. And... I'm sitting there going, God, that's funny. Like here I was just going. It's exactly you know, like, what you put your mind to it, huh? Yeah, it really truly is. And, um, and here's what I've noticed, you know, that sometimes like in chatting with business owners, they'll be like, I need more clients. But they'll have a story saying, I'm so busy. I don't have time for anything. Mm. And there's a conflict in creation. There's a, I don't, re does that make sense? Yeah. Like on one level, they're like, oh my God, I'm so tired. I'm so busy. I'm working friggin' like a dog. On the, other, um, on the other level, they're saying, I want more clients, but there's a clash because they can't, yeah. the, 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 their desire to not have anything else get on their to-do list is actually greater than their desire to sign more clients. And you'll find that you repel clients when you vibrate at that frequency. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really important to be conscious. So I want to share with you guys, we're just talking about this with Quinton, you know, what, what's really going on and how do we really create? And this actually comes from the work of Abraham Hicks or Esther and Jerry Hicks who channel Abraham. Check Abraham Hicks out on YouTube. It's friggin' awesome. Spiritual stuff. So if you like spiritual stuff, you'll love it. The, um talks about the laws of the universe and how everything functions. For the most part, a lot of us have heard about law of attraction. You know, we've seen the secret. The secret, and yeah. The, the, the secret really opened that up. Ultimately, though, the law of attraction states that we, um, we attract more of what we are and who we are. So you'll attract people like you. You know, your friends will be similar to you. You'll find that when you're out in public, you're meeting people. If they're not like you, you'll actually feel repelled against. Like, you just, they'll be like, ew, you know, ewy yeah. to the people that aren't like you. So law of attraction gives you more of who you are. The, um, here's, here's how we create. Law of attraction is always working. It's always giving you more of whatever your frequency is. So It's you know, not a switch that can be flicked on or off. It is always on. It's on. It's like yeah. supercharged. It's connected to some you know, uber awesome battery. Yeah, <laughs> constantly on. The, um, and there's two others. There's, there's two other things going on. You know, one of them is... Creation. We're constantly creating and we're either consciously creating or creating on autopilot. What that means is that if you're consciously creating, you're con consciously thinking. You've got an intention for your day. You, you know, you'll wake up in the morning and you'll intend the day to look a certain way. You'll see the different things you want to get done, getting done inside of your head. So you kind of create the day as you go. Mm. You have a vision for the next 10 years, 20 years, 3 years. You know, you've actually consciously created your life, your business, that's conscious creating. You know, that's, that's, that's what people, and to be honest with you, when you look at the studies done, when, when they've, uh, they've researched millionaires and billionaires, and the uh, T. Harvecker actually found that in his research, the difference between millionaires and billionaires were that billionaires spent more time consciously creating in their days than millionaires. That was the only difference. Some were tall, some were fat, some were short. They varied in every other difference, 
However, the billionaires actually consciously created a lot more. They thought consciously uh, about their goals uh, through the day. So conscious creation yeah. is actually a tool. If we're not consciously creating, we are on autopilot, which means that you know the, the subconscious things are actually going to be creating stuff for you, which ultimately means you're always creating. It's just are you driving the goddamn car or are you being driven around are you you know how not about you and oh gosh i hope i'm not the only one on this podcast that does this but have you ever driven and gone shit how did i get here like yeah. you tuned out yeah tuning out while you're driving and somebody else is driving the car you're not conscious <laughs> yeah yes it's like that you can either be consciously present driving your life or you can tune out and you know, get to places. Well, it's, and, it's the difference between the people who, who are clear as to where they're going and what needs to be done for them to get there and those that are like, just go with the flow and I'll see what happens and see where we end up and see what, what's coming around the corner. They, it works for some people and it also doesn't work for a lot of people. It just depends on which way do you want to go. Do you want to do you want to be someone that can actually guide it into a specific direction or just go with the with the universe go with what's out there and see where you end up I prefer the former <laughs> I do <laughs> and so ultimately you know it's a getting get that guys if, if law of attraction is always working and if you consciously create by setting an intention for the day by having little goals and little things you want to achieve by having a vision by having a big fat why you know by by having a whole bunch of tools that, you know, that have you be the best version of yourself. You create whatever you want then. And then number three, because it's not just consciously creating, so it's not just consciously going, oh, I want a rabbit, you know. The, um, <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but you know, I'm just going to use <laughs> a rabbit. Let's go with it. Go with yeah, it. Well, yeah, sometimes, you know, like as a kid, you're like, you want a dog. You're like, yeah, but when I was a kid, I did. I thought about a dog and I never got one. There's a reason for it which is number three, it's actually the art of allowing, the vibration of allowing. You can only, once again, get it, guys. You can only have more of what you are. So if you're tuned into lack, saying, I want more money, if you're consciously thinking money, 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 mm. but you're feeling broke, 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 you aren't going to attract more money into your world. You can only attract more broke because law of attraction is giving you more of what you are, not but also to add to that, for someone who's got a thinking around want more money, more money, he also could have a thinking of that I need to work harder, but he doesn't essentially want to work any harder. So that's where it's kind of like shutting the gate for him. Yeah, where it's, it's someone on, on the same lines of wanting to, um, to no longer be like have any more debt in the sense of rather than focusing on having all of your bills paid. It's, it's a different way of looking at it and a different way of you attracting it. The same of um, wanting to have your dream house versus l feeling how you live in your dream house. It's a completely different thinking of it because wanting to buy your dream house equals to mortgage repayments, equals to this, credit checks, uh, whatever comes with it, whether you have enough money right now versus living the experience of living in your dream house that changes the entire attitude for you to be able to move closer to it. Yeah, it's the being of, you know, it's actually like vibrating, being in the frequency of the being of. Mm. You know, here's the thing, we think to ourselves, okay, when I double my business, I'll, um, you know, when I ask people, this is what cracks me up, it's a, you know, it's a, what do you want to do? I want to double my business. Why do you want to do that? Well, so I have more money <laughs> and I have more time. Yeah. Well, you know, what's the purpose of having more money and more time in your life? What's that going to give you? Oh, I'm going to have freedom. Oh, well, what's the purpose of freedom? Oh, then I'm going to feel happy. I'm going to feel fulfilled. You know, ultimately, what they're after is the feeling of freedom, happiness, and fulfillment. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Yep. And here's the thing. That's the vibration. That's the actual, like, that is the being that's going to get them the more money and the more time. Yeah? Yeah. So all they need to do is practice already feeling free, looking for where they're already free, and they are. You know, are you in some weird Nazi, you know, camp? No, you're free. You're good yeah. to go. <laughs> and you don't have to go to the fields to go and pick up your grains. You can just buy the bread uh, in the supermarket. Like, That's right. You've got it already around you. And so this is the thing that ultimately when we're wanting to achieve certain things in our business or in our life, we've got to ask ourselves, what 
is the purpose of that? How is that? Because we, we do things so we feel better. Just get it. Every single thing we do is because we believe we're going to feel better in the having of it, period. Mm. Otherwise, why the crap would you do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Why would you do anything that, you know? And so if you can identify, well, what's the being of? Once I have X goal reached, how will I feel? What's it going to give me? And if you can identify what that is, so for example, it could be I'm going to feel free, fulfilled, happy, it could be calm, peaceful, whatever, right? Then your job is to invoke that feeling inside of you right now before you have the thing come about and manifest. And it is what, the being is what brings it about. It's funny because this is how we really create. We create as be, do, have. The being creates inspired doing and has us have whatever it is that we want. The yeah. human beings somehow have been programmed to do it the other way around. It's have, do, be. You know, I laugh. It's like once I have more money in my business, then I'll do more marketing <laughs> <laughs> so I can be successful. <laughs> the, yeah. the, um, you know, ultimately, though, it's, we're doing things the wrong way around. You know, law of attraction is always working. And so it's about getting that we need to allow the stuff to come through, but the vibration needs to be a match for it. And so this is where my vibration was very firmly on five, five new clients from this event. That's it. You know, I want to look after myself and finish the task that I'm doing and I want to be able to give them my absolute best. So I'm happy to take on five. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? But the vibration was solid. Like it felt good. That goal felt really good. It felt like, ah, you know, does, like, and so as a result, that's, that's what I create. I've, and I've always wondered, as you're saying that regarding the event, I've always wondered how it actually works with clients while I'm working on clients' campaigns for the work that I'm doing versus the intention that they have, the vibration that they're at, and where the influence lies. Hello. How does, yes, we're here. Yep, I just, well, oh, we're back to you. So you're, saying, <laughs> you're wondering that when you're working, because obviously you do marketing for people. Yeah, so how does, how does the work that, that I'm performing and based on the client's vibration, what, what, they, what their intentions are, where they actually want to go, and how those two are either on path or they're completely off and the client gets little to no results or the client gets a lot of results. And I, often, I oftentimes wonder how, how much that is actually at play. Massive. Um, yeah. Massively. So this is where when I look at staffing. So, you know, so for example, it's funny, but, um, but I, I remember in my, in my very, very first business, your staff are either going to improve your business or reduce it, but you're actually the core. Meaning yeah. that if, you, if the leader, if the owner um, isn't driving the heart of the business, isn't, you know, hasn't got the goals that, you know, isn't um, in that place of, you know, focusing and, and visual, like seeing what they want to see, their staff can come on board, but there's a conflict because if the owner isn't vibrating at a frequency to have their business succeed, then the staff that are producing results aren't going to be producing the results unless they themselves are vibrating at a frequency to be an absolute rock star. And usually what happens is when a rock star employee comes on board, they will perform at such a high level that then they convince the owner that they are a rock star, that they get results, and the owner then vibrates at a frequency of, oh my God, that person's got it nailed. Trust yeah. that person's got it nailed. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and that person does. Now, here's the funny part, that if the business owner has issues around financials, so if they're, if they're sort of, if they've got their own crap going on financially, they could hire you, Quinton. You could produce, there's two things that could, there's a few, few outcomes. One, if they're in line with getting you to produce awesome results, they will. Yeah. You will. You'll actually find your campaigns perform and your conversion rates are phenomenal. If they're not in line, you'll find your shit just doesn't work. It's funny. It's just yeah. it's weird. It's like the, the, because vibrationally, the people that are online, I know this sounds a bit woohoo, but the people that are online, that are going to notice the ads are going to be the ones that are vibrating at a frequency of receiving the message. So they're the people that don't just, don't just have the problem, but they're also in a place where they're open to receiving the answer. Yeah? Yeah. Now, when the business owner is vibrating at a frequency of attracting those people, it's just they just somehow seem to sink. They get online, 
the ad. I know it sounds a bit weird. It's like Schrodinger's cat. The um yeah. the story. If no, you're familiar I've experienced with it. it with a few clients yep. over and over, and it, it's just not something I've been able to actually say like, okay, this is how much it plays with it. But I do know it's it makes a huge difference, especially with the client where the client knows in the direction that they're going. If they've got their story sorted, if they've got their why identified, if they've got their offer, like a, a solid offer that they know it will the, the market will just devour, all of, all of a sudden everything changed because it boosts their own confidence for them to vibrate at a certain level yep. rather than having the doubt and the fear and the insecurities of what are people going to think about this. And, and I've always wondered how much it plays, but I don't know. I massive. do know that it Everything. plays a massive, massive, massive. part with it. Honestly, Even if it is a third party in with it, yes. It's, it's, it depends on what story they're telling themselves. Yeah. One exercise, guys, listening. Um, one thing that's really, really cool for you, for everyone to do is ask yourself, answer, like get a piece of paper and a pen and literally in that piece of paper and a pen, I'll, um, write a couple of questions and answer them for yourself. The first one is if your marketing created a flood of new clients, you know, like a, a beautiful flow and flood of the ideal amount of clients that, uh, that would give you the profitability to, to grow, to, you know, to do whatever it is that you need to do. What would, make, what would that make available to you in your life? So you want to like literally write down, if we got this marketing campaign to be super successful and it achieved its outcome, what would that, how would that impact my life positively? Mm. And let yourself write out, what's your personal why for this campaign? What does it give you? You know, and let yourself feel it. You know, like literally just let yourself, you know, have that magic wand. Then what does it do? What's the why for the business? If this marketing campaign is successful and it reaches its outcome, you know, how does that impact the business? How does that enable the business to fulfill its mission, its vision, grow, scale? Like what's the, you know, what's the gift for the business in it? Write that down for yourself. Then what you want to do is you want to write the next question, which is in looking at what it gives you, what it gives your business, you answer why is that important? Why is all of that growth, all of those you know, benefits important? Mm. And you write the answer to why that's important. This gets you connected neurologically, like this, this adds emotion and vibration into you know, the, the outcome itself. It has you really tune into the positivity of it and what I've found is it usually clears, it actually clears any of the, like it clears some negative hiccups because it gets you thinking differently. So as opposed to thinking, oh shit, will it work? Being in a stupid, like, you know, unresourceful state, it puts you into a positive, happy, like excited state. Yeah. Once, you've, once you've done that, you want to ask yourself two questions. The, um, and this is more negative where you ask yourself, okay, if I don't, if my marketing, if, if the way I operate my business doesn't change in the next 12 months, if I don't improve my marketing, if I don't put any marketing campaigns out there, if, so for example, with your clients, Quinton, it'd be if, um, you know, if, if I don't do everything in my power to you know, be the best me I can be for the marketing campaign that Quinton is running and it flops and all my stuff continues to flop, whereas nothing changes for the next 12 months, where will I be and where will my business be? So it's literally going 12 months from now, if nothing changes and I don't grow and my business and my marketing doesn't grow, where will I be? Then three years from now, if nothing changes and I'm still here in this exact spot in business, how will my life look and where will my business be? That is such powerful questions in the sense of once you've identified it, once you've defined what it, what, where your business will be, where your life would be, and for you to become comfortable around those decisions and how your life will look then, it changes how you're actually going to go about performing um, in order, whether it's your marketing, or it's your health, or it's your relationships. You're able to take the chances. You're able to take the leap. You'll be able to take the, make bigger decisions because you're comfortable with where you're going to be in 12 months from now if nothing changes. And what I've found too, like exactly, what I've found is, you know, with this exercise, people are either, people are wired differently. Some people are motivated towards possibility and some people are motivated to run the crap away from pain. <laughs> and for the most part, we're, we're, you know, we're motivated by both, but we just, we're, the, some people are more necessity, like get away from pain driven yeah. and others are possibility, where's my carrot? And this exercise hits all of it. 
So it, it works on both. Mia, my little doggies are barking. Mia, agree. And saying she hi. And agree. She is agree. She's like, <laughs> yes. But what I've found with this kind of stuff is, you know, like, if these little exercises actually heal our bullshit. So, you know, if you have some underlying bullshit beliefs, when you run it through this model, it actually eliminates some of the silly beliefs. In, like, it's because it's a different conversation. Yeah. When you link pain, if you've got resistance to marketing, if you're sitting here going, shit, I know I should be content marketing, but oh, type, but don't really want to talk, don't want to get my stuff out there. You know, then you run this exercise and go, okay, well, if I don't in 12 months' time, nothing changes, I don't have a platform, I haven't used one of the most important marketing vehicles, and I'm still you know, behind the, the game a year from now, three years from now, every dog and their cat and their Right, you know, person's rabbits content marketing, and I'm still not content marketing. You know, <laughs> how's that impacting me? I just found that that really does help. Mm. So, you know, <laughs> so, so from that perspective, you know, like to me, it's a being grateful every day, visualizing, getting yourself into good states, and understanding that if shit's not working out, it's either you're not vibrating at the frequency to receive what you want because what you want is literally just a different vibration to where you're at. Yeah. Like I said, you know, you literally, like you can't attract money um, if you're in a broke mindset. Here's the funny part, that you could even, you, you may get some revenue through your business if you're feeling broke, but what I've found is usually when people have that mindset, they get all these weird unexpected expenses, you know, that... What, yes. a $7,000 machine that they need breaks. So friggin', you know, like all this stuff happens. And so this is all a part of it, guys. Get that you're creating your word world based on your vibrations. So it's either a gift for you to grow and an insight for you to get the insight of, oh, you know, like understand something so you can continue growing or it's a vibrational thing. I find that that's how it works. But we're always creating and it, that's all there is to it. It's always you. It's not somebody else. You can't yeah. point the finger. It's not the economy. It's not frigging your neighbor. It's not your neighbor's dog. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's you. It's yeah. you that's creating. And it is, you can either take, take charge or you can just go with the flow of it. And when you take charge, you take responsibility of your actions and, non, uh, and non-actions and your results and non-results. And from that, you're able to influence. I mean, you, it, it's, it's basic from, from NLP where we've learned that you can't control what is happening, the circumstances around you, but you can control as to what that means to you and what you do with that piece of information and how that ultimately shapes your reality around it. And that is the most important part where the moment you decide to do something about it, things around you change different meanings, different things, new vibrations, new experiences, new conversations, new relationships, and things start to take, take place. Yeah, and this is why I love education so much. This is why I will always be a part of the personal and professional development industry and I'll always be a customer of it, mm. meaning that I'm constantly, like currently I must admit I've stopped reading, I've gone into audio books because I love audio books. Yeah, and I know you're the same. Um, but I'm constantly, there's always something, like I've, I'm consuming uh, material on marketing and business, but I'm also always consuming uh, material on just human behavior, psychology, um, yes. quantum physics, like just the, the way the universe works. I'm, I'm constantly in the conversation of creation and, you know, I find that the more we grow as individuals, we do, we attract different people into our lives. We don't want to hang out with people that bitch and complain. We just want to hang around with people that talk about ideas and concepts and, you know, and support us. And I think that that's when the game changes. The more we consciously create, we consciously choose to live our lives, we, um, we just, we end up with a life that's very different than yeah. the average Joe. Um, would you agree with that? Totally agree. I'm a big fan yeah. of personal development. Hmm. Yeah. On that note. I think smashed it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, like I said before, if you want the details for my, um, my health guru person, if you yourself have actually in the past burnt out and hurt your body a little bit, overworked, um, working too hard in business because you bought into the idea that, you know, you should hustle and work 24-7, because that means you're a winner. If you bought into that, like I did years ago, <laughs> and you hurt yourself, <laughs> the, um, feel free to reach out and I'll hook you up with my person. 
Um, two, if you want to continue the conversation, if you've got questions, you know, if, if you would like to just have a, you know, be able to connect to Quinton or myself, ask us a question about something specifically for your business. We have a club, a Facebook, private Facebook group for you called Marketing with Vino. Go to marketingwithvino.com. There's a blue box that says join the club. Click that. Get yourself in there and, um, and introduce yourself. Come and say hi. Quinton, it's been... <laughs> Quentin, it's been a pleasure and an honor talking to you. As always, my friend, I love you to bits and pieces. And next time, um, we'll talk some more. <laughs> Thanks, Gabs. It has been absolutely wonderful listening to your wisdom. Thank you so much for sharing and thanking our listeners for tuning in. Until next time, ciao, ciao. And thank you for sharing too. Bye, everyone. You've been listening to Marketing with Vino. If you enjoyed this episode and want to access the resources discussed in this episode, go to marketingwithvino.com and select which episode you've listened to.